Hello everyone, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are gonna be answering a number of viewer questions all in one video and all related to safety capacitors. Now, in previous videos on isolated systems and in particular isolated power supplies, I have brought up several times the use of Y-type or Class Y capacitors. There are also Class X capacitors that you can use for applications in EMI filtering and isolated power supplies. I'm gonna show you what these capacitors are and how you use them in power systems. Let's go ahead and get started. If you've watched any of our other videos on isolated systems, specifically on connecting grounds and isolated power supplies, as well as on EMI filter circuit design, then you know I've brought up Y-type capacitors several times. There are actually two types of safety capacitors that are used in these systems for different purposes. The first one is called a class X capacitor and the second one is called a class Y capacitor. Both of these capacitors are standardized under the IEC 60384-14 standard. This standard is a performance-based standard meaning it doesn't specify how to build these capacitors, it just specifies the performance conditions that these capacitors need to meet in order to be considered deserving of a particular classification. So these classifications are based on peak and AC voltages. And here you can see on screen, we have a list of all of the voltage requirements for these different types of capacitors. Now, how are these different types of capacitors used in isolated systems? Let's hop onto the board and look at some circuit diagrams and we'll see where they're used in different circuits and why they are used in that way. First, let's take a look at the use of safety capacitors and EMI filters and power supplies. Now, if you remember our EMI filters video, you will recall some of the placement of these capacitors and I'll call out what types of capacitors these are. So let's just say we have an AC input and normally when we have this AC input, you might see a capacitor here as part of an EMI filter circuit. This line to line capacitor, where we're going from the line to the neutral, is an X type capacitor. This is one reason they are sometimes called a line to line capacitor. You may also see in some filter circuits the use of two capacitors essentially ganged together like this, which then connect back to the chassis or earth ground. These capacitors are our Y-type capacitors or class Y capacitors. Why do we use these in this way? Well, there are a couple of different reasons. So first of all is noise coming in off of the line input. Now you might say, well, you know, we just put a ferrite choke on the input power cord and that takes care of all the noise. It actually doesn't take care of all of the noise. Some noise does get into the front end stage of this power system. When we have differential mode noise, that noise will come through here pass through our X-type capacitor, and then return back through the ground return and complete a circuit here through this capacitor. High frequency differential mode noise is nicely filtered out by this X-type capacitor and is prevented from passing further along this circuit into the other stage of the system. What about Y-type capacitors? Well, Y-type capacitors are very useful for dealing with common mode noise. If we have some noise that comes in here like this, and then we have that same magnitude and polarity noise come in here like this on the neutral line, these two noises will pass through these capacitors, and then they both return together along this chassis ground or earth ground. So this is the primary usage of Y-type capacitors in these systems. We are essentially taking all of that common mode noise at high frequencies and allowing it to pass through this ground connection rather than passing through to the rest of the system. Now, if you go back to the voltage ratings that I showed earlier in the video, you'll notice that those voltage ratings specify pulse withstand requirements for those different classes of capacitors. Well, those pulse withstand requirements allow these capacitors to essentially filter out pulses that might result from power surges or even from ESD events. So let's suppose on the line, we have a pulse that comes in and starts propagating along this wire. Here, we have essentially ground while this line is carrying signal. So this line is then going to allow this pulse to pass through this capacitor. And if this capacitor has high enough withstand voltage, it can withstand this peak voltage from this pulse and then pass that back to ground rather than allowing this pulse to pass through to the other end of the system. 
Now, in these systems where we expect we might experience these types of faults or we might experience these pulses coming in on one of these lines, we, of course, have other measures that we'll use with these capacitors in order to fully protect the rest of the power system. So some of those could be TVS diodes. We could also have metal oxide varistors. That's actually very common to see in front, front end stage of power systems. We could also have gas discharge tubes. Another thing we could have are fuses. And then we could also have things like circuit breakers. So all of these different elements are normally used in parallel with each other in order to protect against different classes of ESD or EMI or faults in the system. Knowing what your system might experience, you can then go through and select from this menu of stuff in order to help the system withstand any kind of faults or ESD or any other problems that it might experience from power surges. Now, since these capacitors are part of EMI suppression or EMI filtering, what else could they be used with? You may also see this X-type capacitor used along with, let's say, a Pi filter or as part of a Pi filter. So you could have an inductor and then another capacitor over here that forms a low-pass filter arrangement. You could also have chokes on the output side of this arrangement. So you may have a choke that then cuts off any noise and acts as a low pass filter for anything that comes off of this Y type arrangement. So since these capacitors are all being used as part of EMI suppression and EMI filtering, they might also appear alongside other components inside this front end stage of this power system. So for example, this X type capacitor is being used to address differential mode EMI. So it could also be used alongside for example, an inductor and another capacitor to form a Pi filter, basically a low pass filter. Since these Y type capacitors are also being used to address common mode EMI, they could also be used alongside a common mode choke. So you might see a choke on the output side of these Y type capacitors. So again, you're gonna pair these up with other components in the system to fully address the EMI that's coming in from this line. So we saw what happens when we have a power system that requires EMI filtering on the input with safety capacitors. But what about when we have a system that's isolated and we need to connect the two grounds on the secondary side and the primary side? Well, for that, we need to know where we actually define ground on the primary side of the system. So let's suppose we have a bridge rectifier and then we have rectified DC coming out of this bridge rectifier and going to a transformer. This transformer on its secondary side will then have a secondary ground defined somewhere on the secondary side of the system. How do we connect the secondary ground back to the primary ground so that we allow any high frequency noise on this side of the system to then travel back to the power return on the primary side of the system? Well, for that, we would use a class Y or Y type capacitor. To do that, we would then want to link our secondary ground to our primary ground using this capacitor. So it's a very simple connection. And if you ever see this in the schematic for an isolated power converter or an isolated DC-DC converter, this capacitor is normally a Y-type capacitor. Where do we define P, G, and D on this side of the system? Do we define it here or do we define it here? Well, we actually want to define it right here. This is our PGND node right here on the output side of this bridge rectifier. We don't want to define it here because remember, this is line and this one is neutral. And of course, the incoming power switches polarity from between each cycle of that incoming sine wave. So the result is that if it's ground here momentarily, at some point later, it will then become signal and this will become ground. So we want to have that connection between secondary ground and primary ground back here to the output side of our bridge rectifier. So now that we know how to use these capacitors, where do we find them? Well, let's take a look at Octopart and I'll show you what you need to search in order to find these different types of capacitors. So here I am on Octopart and there are a few different ways you can start to search for class X and class Y capacitors. So one thing you could do is just search generally for safety capacitors. What this is gonna do is bring up a whole slew of different results some of which may or may not be compliant with the IEC 60384-14 standard. If you scroll through these results, you start looking at the voltage ratings, you're gonna see a whole bunch of voltage ratings here. Now you could go through and start filtering these if you like, and eventually you may narrow down to something that is compliant with the specific class that you need. 
But one thing that you could, of course, do is just search for class X2 capacitors. So if you search for class X2 capacitors, you're gonna see a whole bunch of results here, and these are going to be much more likely to be compliant with that IEC standard. So to verify, just check here in the data sheet. I'm just gonna open up the data sheet for this first result. And then if I scroll down here, you see under the typical application section, right here, X2 class for interference suppression. So this does comply with the standard for X2 safety capacitors. You can of course go through and do this again for any of the class Y capacitors and you'll get a bunch of different results. You'll notice here that because these are higher voltage rated capacitors, they tend to be physically large. That is pretty typical for safety capacitors and that's exactly what you would expect to need in a power system. So be careful when searching for a standard like this. Not all data sheets are going to mention the standard directly and as you can see here, it doesn't pull up a lot of results. You're much better off just searching for the class of capacitor that you want. As you can see here for class Y2, it pulls up a ton of results and then you could of course go through and apply the filtering features as usual to narrow down to the part that you want. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to check out the video links in the description. They go over some of those other concept videos about connecting grounds and isolated power supplies and how to design EMI filters. Don't forget to leave your comments and questions in the comment section and your comment or question just might get turned into a video on this channel. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.